Welcome back to Maintenance Monday. Now I've got something a little bit different in store for you today, because as you can imagine, I spend a lot of my time here at the GCN Megabase workshop. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity to run you through all of the different tools we've got here in our workshop. And you never know, there might even be a tool out there that you didn't know existed. We've got almost every tool you could possibly think of here in the GCN Megabase workshop, plus probably some that you hadn't thought of. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity to run us through, and we'll start over in this corner of the wall. So the first thing we've got is our work stand. Super important to have if you're gonna be maintaining your bike lots. And the best thing about this one, it's got a super heavy base, which means it's nice and sturdy when you're working on the bike and you haven't got to worry about the stand moving around. So coming onto our wall, some of the tools we've got over here are all about holding the bike still to make it nice and easy to work on. Like this tool, for example, super easy. It just hooks over the handlebars and over the top tube of your bike, stops your handlebars spinning around when you're working on the bike. Something that's particularly helpful when you've got the bike at an angle and the bars just want to keep swinging around. Over here, we've got the weighing scales. Obviously, we use those a lot here at GCN. Make sure we've got the weight of the bike perfectly right. This here is a cool little tool, which I quite often like using, because I do like tubeless tires. Don't know if I've mentioned it before. But this is um, a tool that will allow you to seat the bead of your tubeless tires easily. So you can just adjust it like so, hold onto the tire at the side, and then it allows you to lever the tire and sort of guide the um, the bead of the tire up onto the bead of the wheel and get it to seat correctly. Quite a handy little tool that. Saves you using your hands. Moving round further on the wall, we're starting to get to some of our headset tools. We've got the uh, headset bearing press here, designed to fit those external cups into your frame if you've got a press fit style headset. We've got our crown raise puller. If I switch sides over here, we've got some of the cutting equipment to cut the steer of your forks down, particularly useful if you've got a new bike or you've made big changes to the, uh, to the setup and positioning of your handlebars. Sticking with this corner here, we've got our guides for cutting all those steerers. So this is a steerer cutter guide. So you slide your fork straight through there. And then this section here, you clamp into our vise and then you guide it down onto your steerer. And this little gap through down here is where you would guide the saw to get a nice clean cut on your forks. This here is the hacksaw blade, specifically designed for cutting carbon steerer forks. So when you've got your hacksaw, you then guide that through there, and cut your steerer nice and flush. So I'll put that back on the wall. A nice tool here, which disc brakes being incredibly popular at the moment, this is a disc rotor aligning tool. So if your disc get a bit bashed, if you're maybe putting your bike into the car, this will allow you to slide it over the disc brake rotor and then just bend that very carefully back into alignment. Very handy tool to have this one. We've got a couple of different taps. So if you maybe damage the thread of a component, you can just pick the relevant size tap, run that through the thread. It will not only clean it out, it will enable you to recut some of the thread on your components there, meaning that there's no need to throw some components away. Just tucked down here is this neat little device. So this is something many of you might not even recognize or know what it is, but it's a tool specifically designed for hydraulic hoses. So here on the side, you've got a very sharp blade so that you can cut your hoses to the correct length by placing them through there and just closing the handle up. So that'll enable that. And then here, it's specifically designed to enable you to fit the barbs inside the ends of the hydraulic hoses. So what you would do, you would undo this little piece here, guide your hydraulic hose in through here, clamp it up in place, and then as you squeeze this lever, this piece here would push the barb that you've put on the end into your hydraulic, into your hydraulic hose, and then guide it into place. No stress whatsoever, and you get the barb easily lined up and fitted. A lot easier than trying to do it by hand using the vise. Here we've got, again, more tools for steerers. These are crown race setting tools. These will guide over the top of your steerer, particularly if you've got an alloy steerer with an external headset, so it'll guide over the top and you can hammer that crown race into place. Got some other tools here for banging headsets out. So this would guide up through where the forks would be. These sort of fingers then splay out into place. And you can bash the external cups out. Loads of different fittings there for all of these different headset parts. Over here, we've got three different types of chain whip. These sort of are the newer design, the sort of plier ones. So these come like this. 
and they're used for removing your cassette. So as you undo the lock ring, you need to hold the cassette in place because the free wheel will enable it to turn. So these you could clamp over, hold it together, and your cassette goes in the middle there. And that'll stop that turning around, nice and simple. These are a load of different bottom bracket cups. So these are for all the different types, sizes, and standards of bottom brackets. These will simply fit over some of the external cups. We've got lots of different shapes. Here we've got our cassette lock ring tools. So there's two different ones here. This one is for a through axle, so you've got this wider fitment to fit into the hub. This one is for your standard sort of quick release wheel, so you've got a much smaller pin there to guide that into place. Got a selection of different spanners. Not something that's commonly used on our bikes anymore, sort of nuts and bolts, more sort of torques and Allen key fittings. Speaking of which, here are the most commonly used tools on our tool wall, the Allen keys and the Torx keys. These are so common on our bikes now, they're definitely the tools which get the most use in the GCN Megabase workshop. Over here, we've got a ratchet, a nice breaker bar. So we use this if we're trying to undo a bolt, like a, a crank bolt maybe that's particularly tight. So we've got loads of leverage on this that'll enable you to undo the most stubborn of bolts. And then under here, we've got our good old friend, the torque wrench. And as I always remind people whenever we're talking about torque wrenches, always leave it unwound with no tension on it. So, oh goodness me, I shall be having a word with whoever used this last because this has been left on six Newton meters. So make sure you unwind it correctly and leave it tucked away at the side so it won't lose any of its calibration and you know that your bolts are done up correctly. Before we carry on any further, we just need to flick back because how did I manage to go past our wheel truant jig? So this is the all singing, all dancing, professional grade wheel truant jig. So you've got all of the different settings and adjustments on here. We've even got this run out dial test gauge here to make sure your wheels are perfectly in line. Got a nice little through axle adapter here because most commonly now disc brake bikes use through axles. So we've got all of the little spoke keys and tools to adjust down here. We've got this one, which you can adjust the spoke nipples from inside. Basically, we've got every single spoke key tool you could possibly have tucked away down there. So back onto our wall, which is over here. So we've got another set of spanners here. These run through in the same size to what we've got over there, apart from these ones have got a little ratcheting head on one end. So it's easy when you've got a little bolt that's a bit tricky to gain access to. It makes it a little bit quicker to undo it. So these run through from a nine mil through to a 17. Let's check. Yeah, there you go. 17 is the largest one. Put that back in there. Moving along from there, we've got some ginormous Allen keys. And to be fair, these hardly ever get used because it's not very often you'll find a massive Allen key on your bike as big as that. Further along here, we've got some more tools. These are onto the uh, bottom brackets these are for. So this one here is a nifty little tool, particularly good for banging out BB30 bottom brackets. So you just take your crank out, guide this tool through, so that'll go through there like that, line that up, and then you can hit the end of this with your hammer and it'll push the bottom bracket cups outside of your frame. This is another similar tool. So this tool works with the same principle as the tool that I was talking about earlier for the uh, headsets. So you guide this through your bottom bracket, reverse all the way through that way. These fingers will then compress up and then as it reaches the inside face of your bottom bracket, expand like that and allow it to hit the end and then push the bottom bracket out of your bike. A um, couple of different hammers, pretty self-explanatory what they are. This hammer for hitting stuff out of your bike. This hammer for when that one's not enough. This is a bit of a big one. Over here is a fantastic little tool, which I'd imagine lots of you will not have the slightest clue what this is. But it's something that I use quite a lot of times, actually. So this is a dummy pedal, effectively. So you thread this part into your crank, and then when you're working on your bike, you've got a nice little handle to uh, turn your cranks with. Particularly useful if you haven't put any pedals on your bike yet. Nice. One of my favorite tools, that. Before we go any further, this is a little merry-go-round station we have sat on our workbench. It's kind of a little bit of a dumping ground for stuff that you don't want to lose. So this has got some right interesting little parts on here. We've got our puncture repair kit. Doesn't get used very often here. We've got a little valve core removal tool. We've got our dummy, uh, dummy brake pad spacer. So this will go in place of where your disc roads will go so that you can't push the pistons out too far. Tape measure, good for measuring things. Cut off a piece of tire so we can use that for demos and stuff like that. We've got a part here which is out of the internal cable routing tool. So this you can guide through the frame and allow you to get sort of cables and hoses guided through the internal parts of the frame. 
But this piece, which is a nifty little tool, and goes in place of your rear wheel, which means you can run the chain around it. When you've got the wheel removed, your chain isn't going to bang onto your frame and run the risk of damaging the paintwork. Around here, we've also got, look at the size of this giant tire lever. So if you've got a particularly tough or tricky tire to use, this big tire lever will get even the most stubborn of tires onto your wheels. Um, that's most of the cool stuff off this. Right, into the far corner of the workshop now. Got a selection of different pliers and cutters here. So you screwdrivers. Again, not that commonly used on our bikes. Under here are some cool little pliers. So these, get the other set here. These are circlip pliers. They've got these small little pins on the end of them. So you can see the same here. And circlips are used on parts which aren't easily removable on your bike. So if you're taking a component apart to try and service it, for example, sometimes you might have it on the inside of a rear hub holding a bearing or a spacer in place. So you've got internal and external circlips, and as such, you've got pliers which do a different job. So you watch, when I squeeze these ones together, the ends close up, like so. Whereas these ones, if I squeeze these together, the ends open up. So you just pick out the ones relevant to whether you've got internal or external circlips. Over here, we've got this, which is something that I've never actually used since being here. This is designed to allow you to decide what bolt circle diameter your cranks have. So you simply line these pins up with the, uh, the space where the bolts go on your cranks. And then over here, when it guides and lines into place, you've got a little indicator that will tell you what the bolt circle diameter is of your cranks. Nifty little tool, that. Chain checker. You know, this, is, this one's pretty self-explanatory. Just explains whether your chain is worn and needs replacing, or whether it's new and got plenty of life left in it. Just two little adjustable pins, slot those onto your chain, apply a little bit of pressure, and then read the indicator on here. Like it says, new chain measures between 0.25 and 0.5. When it gets to 0.75, that's when you want to replace your chain. Here are some of the preset torque wrenches that we've got here. So this one's a four newton meters, this one's five, and this one's six. So these are super handy if you know items such as your, ha your handlebars, your seat posts, for example. If they're all common, commonly one torque wrench set in, then you can just use these. So this is set at six newton meters. You turn it, and it'll click once you've reached that correct torque setting. So at the end here, the bits inside are interchangeable. So you can take this out here, whereas this is a four mil Allen key fitting, and inside the handle, you can just turn this, that comes out, and we've got a few different Allen keys, and then we've got one Torx piece in there, so you can just take that out, put the one in that you need, put that tucked away neat in there, ready to go. That's a good little set, that. Adjustable spanner, that one's pretty straightforward. Like the other spanners, you can just adjust that one. And over here are the tools which I pretty much never use, thankfully, because they're all a little bit extreme. So here, for example, we've got a frame angle um, gauge to check so the frame's nice and in alignment. And this tool, which is so quite heavy as well, it's quite extreme this, this is a tube straightening tool. So God knows what you've got to do to need to use this, presumably at some sort of massive crash. So you can use this to try and straighten out the tubes of your frame. Obviously that's not relevant if you've got a carbon fiber frame. But this has got a massive amount of leverage in here so you can place this part under one bit of the frame, this section hooks over the top, and then you can lever it to try and manipulate it back in to the shape that it should be. Presumably, you may need to use that after a big crash or if you're m modifying your frame, for example. So uh, thankfully, I've never had to use that yet. So the last tool I'm gonna take a quick look at is this, which is designed to allow you to align your rear mech hanger. So this piece here, you'll remove the rear derailleur off of your bike, and this bit will thread onto the derailleur hanger, where your derailleur would go, and then you can move this round, use this pin here to put it level with the edge of the wheel rim, and then as you move it round, you can check that your derailleur is in line with the edge of your wheel. And then you can just use this to manipulate it slightly and align it correctly to make sure you've got perfectly working gears. That's all the tool wall covered, done and dusted. So then over here, we've got our vise, which we use to clamp different tools in and parts that we're working on. Underneath the workbench, we've got all of the different cleaning products, all the different lubricant products that we use. So there's tucked away under there, nice and safe. We've also got these neat little lights that we sometimes use, which are great for uh, highlighting where you've put the chain loop over your chain to make sure you've got it in all the correct places. And over this side, we've got some more tools because we haven't got space up on the wall for them. So under here, we've got 
our bottom bracket bearing press, we've got hydraulic bleeding kit here, we've got a wheel bearing press set, and then in this box here, I've got to show you this, because it's a nifty, nifty little set this is. So this has got loads of different um, sort of sockets, Allen key fittings, torque wrenches, and it's a cool set of this, let me check that out. Although, um, I've got a bit of a bone to pick with somebody, because there are three of these tools missing here. I think I'll be writing a email out to everybody, find where those are, but um, cool set nonetheless. So that can be used with our torque wrench that's up on the tool wall there, so I'll tuck that away. Nice and safe. So that rounds off our whistle stop tour of the GCN Mega Base Workshop. Hope you enjoyed this, and if you have, give it a big thumbs up, and let me know in the comments section, I have all of these tools on the wall, which one's your favourite? Right, that's it from me, I'll see you later.